We're in the New York City offices of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo with Senator Bernie Sanders, Secretary of the Air Force, Deborah Lee James, Senator Bob Dole, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Dr. Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, Howard Dean, 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter, of Leon Panetta, Marco Rubio. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief of USA Today, and this is the 100th edition of Capital Download. We've pulled some key moments from the second year of our weekly Newsmaker series. It's taken us from Leon Panetta's Walnut Farm in California to Tia Leone's TV soundstage in Queens, New York. And we've broken some news. On Capital Download, Jimmy Carter said Edward Snowden's leaks were probably a good thing, despite the damage they caused. There's no doubt that he broke the law and that he would be susceptible, in my opinion, to persecution, prosecution if he came back here under the law. I think, though, that what Snowden has done has been probably uh, constructive in the long run. The Air Force Secretary became the first head of a branch of the Armed Forces to publicly support allowing transgender troops to serve. From my point of view, anyone who is uh, capable of accomplishing the job should be able to uh, serve. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't come under review. Senator Tom Coburn predicted President Obama's executive action on immigration would lead to violence. The country's going to go nuts because they're going to see it as a move outside of the authority of the president. And Howard Dean, once a Democratic insurgent, said he was supporting Hillary Clinton for president and had told her so. I am going to support Hillary. I've known her for 25 years. Other than the people who have served in the office, I think she's the most qualified person to be president in the United States. And, and she's also the most conscientious person I know. Actually, most people run for president because they have the fire in their belly. I'm not entirely sure she does, but I know that she thinks that she owes this to the country. So you're convinced she's going to run? I'm not convinced she's going to run, but uh, if she does, it'll be for the right reasons, and I'll support her. Have you told her you'll support her? Yes. And what did she say? Thank you. This year, we interviewed a former president and a former presidential nominee, and we interviewed a half dozen politicians who just might be interested in running for president in 2016 or beyond. Here's what they told us about their intentions. I'm not a guy who rolls out of bed every morning thinking about what's the next job I can get. 2016, my Senate term expires, so I have to make a decision either way. I haven't uh, made any obviously announcement of that, but what I have said very, very publicly is that we're doing everything consistent with running. And among the Democrats. I'm not running for president. We have races in 2014 that we have got to focus on. We have issues that can't wait. Lesson number 487 worry about today. If, and I have not made that decision, I would have run as an independent, if that campaign did not kick in, you know, and if it looked like as we got close to election day that the votes that I would get could help elect the Republican, I would not allow that to happen. What about the current president? We've heard praise and criticism of Barack Obama, including from some people who have been among his closest advisors. Tim Geithner was his Treasury Secretary during the most difficult days of the financial meltdown. He said, you know, you, you, don't you worry about the politics. You worry about trying to figure out how to, you know, give me a set of options to solve this problem as quickly as we can. And, you know, he didn't, uh, you know, he, he wanted me to bear the responsibility for recommending a plan, but he subjected those recommendations to a pretty tough, uh, brutal examination and debate. But he was not paralyzed by how hard those choices were. There was no good choice. He was not paralyzed by the politics of it. He was willing to decide and to stick with it, support it, and keep at it. And ultimately, the reason why the economy started growing again was because we were able to create enough confidence that the United States would ultimately do what was necessary to save people from the risk of a, of a collapse in that context. And that's, that's to his enormous credit. Leon Panetta served as his CIA director, then Defense Secretary. There's a sense now that everybody's given up on the, on the major issues facing this country, given up on trying to develop any kind of, of uh, budget deal to bring down the deficit, given up on immigration reform, given up on infrastructure funding, given up on energy, given up on trade. Uh, and you can't do that. We, you know, this country uh, has, has survived all of these years because people keep going back at it and fighting for what's right for the country. And that's what the president has to keep doing. We've interviewed the heads of the IRS, 
the EPA, the Interior Department, the Peace Corps. We went to the NIH to talk about the Ebola threat with the nation's top infectious disease specialist. For the region of West Africa, uh, really catastrophic in the sense that it is a very difficult, terrible, high mortality disease that has now gotten out of control. We've talked to senators and governors and White House aides. And my personal favorite, the first U.S. ambassador to the new nation of South Sudan. Her name just happens to be Susan Page. Welcome, Madam Ambassador. Thank you very much. I should make it clear that while we have the same name, we're not otherwise related. That's correct. Finally, we scored an unusual pair of interviews. First, we went to New York to interview the 91-year-old Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State. It was 40 years ago today that President Ford pardoned President Nixon. And I wonder, do you remember what you thought at the time about that? I thought that what Ford did was an act of humanity. A few weeks later, we went back to New York to interview Tia Leone and Tim Daly. She's the faux Secretary of State on CBS's Madam Secretary. I think it's time that men kind of embraced and got over the fact that they're going to be married to women who are powerful or who make more money or who have more notoriety than them, and they should celebrate that. Or they at least have, the TV gets over the idea. Yeah. That, I mean, you uh, never the, get to... And they should have enough confidence to be able to say, like, go, honey. You know, this is awesome, and not be threatened by the fact that their spouse uh, is doing well. Bill Clinton's a little like that. I think so. He's embraced yeah. the, the possibility. What appeal do you about you the... You did not model this. I did not. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Thanks for joining us this year. We'll be back in 2015.